Hey there, this video is going to go through the process of a migration from one data source to another. This can be done uh, when going from, for example, an on-premise solution to a cloud solution, such as ConnectWise uh, on-premise to ConnectWise Cloud, or even uh, with something like our Autotask v1 to Autotask v2 uh, migration. So the steps are going to be fairly similar. Um, in this process, we'll go ahead and add a data source to your account, uh, just to allow you to have both of those running concurrently so that you are able to take the steps outlined here. So essentially, the uh, what we are going to have to do when going through that migration is moving over any gauges which are critical to your uh, how you're using BrightGauge currently. So if you have a good number of gauges that are showing up on your reports, a good number of gauges that are showing up on your dashboards, uh, you'll want to make sure that you get those migrated over to the new data source in order uh, for everything to continue uh, running as you're expecting uh, once the migration is complete. So once you have both of those data sources running concurrently, you would run into the gauges um, and find the uh, data source, uh, the gauges that you are uh, going to be migrating away from. So in this case, we'll use some test data from ConnectWise. And what I would recommend here is uh, looking at the unused gauges. So any unused gauges are going to be gauges that you're not using in any dashboards, goals, or reports. In, gen in general, you can remove most, most of these from the account just uh, from the get-go. So you can just simply click on this button here and go ahead and remove the uh, unused gauges from the account. That's just going to remove some noise. You know for sure that you won't have to uh, be, the, uh, be migrating those over to the new data source. Uh, in general, this is mostly going to be made up of uh, default gauges. Uh, they'll be tagged as bright gauge admin. Uh, and those are going to be gauges that when you move over to the uh, data source that you're migrating to, in general, you will have access to a good number of default gauges, which should match up with these default gauges. And again, it, here we're only being concerned with the unused ones. So, so those ones should show up again uh, with the new data source. Uh, of course, go through the gauges before deleting them all at once, just to confirm that you uh, that there's not any gauges, for example, that you are re referring to every once in a while, whether they not be, uh, even though they're not on the dashboard or report. So once you get all those gauges out, uh, you would be left with the gauges that are being used, and you would want to go ahead and migrate those over to the uh, to the new data source. So that's what this will look like. Here we have something built off of the ConnectWise data source on our test account here, and with the billable hours by tech, uh, we'll see that this gauge is being configured on the time entry data, so, uh, data set. We would simply click into the layer here and pick up the new data source that we're going to be connect that we're going to be connecting to. As mentioned, we will grant you a free data source for this migration process, so you should have both of these running concurrently. Uh, in this case, I'll, go, well, I'll be migrating, migrating this gauge to a time entry data set we have on our Dropbox instance. So the, uh, we'll move over to this new data set. So pick the data source, pick the data set, and we can hit continue here. In some cases, we may run into an issue where a field name doesn't mash up exactly. So for example, we may see uh, for, one data so for one data source, we have the date field tag this date, but for another, it may, be, uh, it may be that it shows up as start, for example, and there is no date field. So that's simply going to be something that you would have to uh, uh, update accordingly in that on, on, in a, on a case by case basis. So here we would remove date, uh, update this to the start field and uh, pick up that same filtering that was, uh, that was being uh, put into effect there. So month to date. Same thing with the drill down. In some cases, you'll have some fields that uh, show up in the drill down, but are not the, are, are not named the same within the new data source. So you would simply remove those and add in the one that correlates on the new data set. Definitely hope that makes sense. Let us know if you have any questions on that specific point. Uh, once you finish migrating all of the gauges uh, on the account that have that, that you are going to be uh, utilizing on your dashboards and uh, reports uh, or goals, you, you can move over to the client mapping section. So with the client mappings, um, this is simply going to be so that you can uh, continue running your reports. Uh, any scheduled reports will continue working once you are on the new data source. So Every data source should be mapped. Uh, once you get that new one connected, this is a step that you can definitely uh, just take right off the bat. So anything uh, that you would have on the data source that you're migrating from, so we'll say Al's Coffee Shop here, for example, we would want to make sure that we have that set up on the Dropbox data source as well. So 
uh, just something to keep in mind there. Definitely want to make sure that you get the client mapping configured as well. So this is essentially the steps that you're going to want to take for uh, to complete the migration process from one data source to another. Uh, as mentioned, we will give you access to a free data source uh, for this migration process. And once you are done getting all of the gauges moved over and are ready to run fully on the new data source, simply let us know and we'll get everything back uh, back to how it's supposed to be as far as the billing and data source count. So hope the information is helpful and we'll be in touch.